imagine, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, you know, I read on here, you talk about all the time the numbers of gigs that you do in a given year, and um, I assume that many of them are kind of far-flung places or not easy to reach places. Like well, some of the college towns and all are easy. Some are, some are, and I mean, that's what you do. I, I like to... Uh, I mean, I think you have to go where the people, you know, the, the, the odd thing about it is no matter where you go, with the exception of a major city like this in New York or Boston, people all say, well, what are you doing here? They always say that, no matter what town you're I mean, they don't realize, well, you, you came there to do a show, and people always think you should be in Las Vegas all the time or something like that, which is, uh, I actually prefer the road. I, I like it. I mean, you find out what real people think is funny. You know, when you live in Los Angeles, it, it really is interesting. When you work in Los Angeles, New York, and you do the comedy clubs, and you hear comedians all the time work those audiences, after a while, the, sometimes the humor gets overly cynical, you know? Like, I find people don't mind it if you go after the president for something he really said or something that he did or an honest mistake. People don't mind it if you really nail him, you know? But if you get out there and you talk about, oh, maybe his sex life or something which, or his age, which is something he can't do anything about, you know what I mean? Something like that. New York, L.A., they'll laugh, but in the rest of the country, people think, hey, man, you're taking a cheap shot. That's really not... And you won't get as big a laugh, and you really don't understand why until you go out and you work those kind of places. Do you know if that makes any sense? Or? Getting to some of these places, though, I, I assume you fly most of the places you go. Yeah, well, yeah. I can, sure. Yeah, sure. okay. But then <laughs> when, you, when you start having to go into areas that, where you have to do connecting and all that. Oh, well, I don't go into the underbrush with some sort of a and slash and burn technique to get to various villages to perform. No, we, we have automobile travel now and train and... Uh, thousands of miles of paved highway, so you can actually get there. I, I'm not sure I understand which way you, you're going Well, I'm that. trying to, to, to get to, because I travel a lot. Oh, well, there you are. Okay. And, I mean, you can really have some horrendous experiences Well, sometimes. I have, yes, I have the worst experiences. I mean, constantly, when you, the worst is when you, you, you think you're on American and you realize you're on American Eagle, which is, of course, this, Apparently, this is the nephew of America. Now, somebody was given this as a gift or whatever it is. But that's what I like when you think you're on the major one, and then you're put off onto Bluebird Airlines, and the, you know, and they're pouring black coffee down the pilot, and then just that that whole strange sort of, uh, you know, uh, you know the, one of those old Ford Tristars and the piston-powered planes. And it's very funny how close people get. You know, it's like these are the last people you'll ever know. So uh, everyone tends to cling together, and it's a nice bonding experience. Very religious, actually. <laughs> it's pretty fun. Have you ever missed a gig simply because you missed a flight or something, or missed no, a connection? No, actually, I never have. I've uh, I've had situations where I almost missed a gig, but then I would uh, spend the money I made on the gig to get to the gig, so you don't miss the gig. I mean, I had one time where I flew in and the plane wasn't leaving. I had to charter a private plane, and it cost me almost what I was making for the job. But that's okay. I mean, it's better than missing the job, you know. No, I've never missed a job. I, I usually have a backup thing. I mean, you know, traveling now is not that much different than in the Old West. Instead of uh, Indians and various wild animals, you now have, uh, you know, r rude salespeople and inattentive travel agents. I mean, it really is the same thing. So you, you, you carry the various weaponry you need to, to fight, you know. It's, it's not that different. <laughs> How are you liking the Carson show? Oh, up? I liked it. It's a great job. It's a great job. I show up at 4 o'clock, who's on the show, I tell some jokes, and I go home at 6.30. It's a great job. I love that job. It's the most fun in show business. You don't have to, you know, when you do sitcoms and things, uh, it's like, Jim, Jay did this joke. What do you think? I like it, but I think we should do it in a restaurant. Larry, let's change it to a theater. And then you have this washed out thing. And I mean, it's real. If the people, the people really laugh, there's no laugh track, there's no applause sign. It's none of that. I mean, at the beginning of the show, they ask everyone to applaud. But after that, it's all on its own. And people applaud what they want. I remember I did, I did a sitcom once, and I had this joke, and I said, you know, this just isn't funny. And they said, oh, we'll fix it in post, which means in post-production, <laughs> they'll put the laugh in. And I said, well, that, that doesn't make it funny. And they said, wait till you hear it. It'll get a scream. I said, but it's not a real scream. It's, <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, they didn't understand what I was arguing. They said, Jay, what do you see? It'll get a big laugh. But it's not getting a big laugh. You, you put the laugh in. And they said, well, of course you put the laugh in. No one thinks this is funny. And I said, <laughs> oh, well, I guess so. So at least on The Tonight Show, it's... Writing the monologue every day is tricky. I've never had to do that before, sit down and write it. But it, it's not unlike being in school and, and, and working and then getting an A on the test. So, plus you get immediate feedback, which is wonderful for a comedian. You know, I just did a movie. And you go 12 weeks 
just performing in front of the camera. And you do like a hilarious joke, and the camera looks up and goes, give me an F10, Bob, uh, we'll try it again. Give me a 118 rectifier on that. You, they're not even listening to what you're saying. <laughs> you know, at least at the Tonight Show, you say it, it gets a laugh. You go, oh, I'll do another joke about that tomorrow night. You know? So it's great fun. I'm having a good time. This movie uh, called Collision Course. Right. Okay, what, what is the idea title, of that? Right? Something a little bit different. It's a cop movie. Hey, there's a switch, huh? Gee, we don't see, <laughs> what, we got 900 of those out now this year. And it stars myself and Pat Morita, you know, from Karate Kid, and I play a Detroit cop, and surprise, Pat is a Japanese cop. And it's one of these industrial espionage things where uh, a Japanese guy has stolen a new turbocharger, from, uh, and he's trying to sell it to an American car company, and a sleazy sort of American guy. Uh, buys it and uh, he kills the Japanese guy and Pat comes over to investigate and I'm investigating the dead Japanese guy and I think it's Pat since he's Japanese and it, it's kind of funny. We filmed it all in Detroit and Tokyo. So, Are you kind of a, a sequel to Beverly Hills Cop? or It's along the lines of Beverly Hills Cop. I mean, I guess everything is along those lines now. It's, uh, uh, yeah, the same type of thing. Uh, it's uh, not quite as, I think it's more of a PG movie. I think Beverly Hills Cop was an R, you know. Yeah, a real R. <laughs> a, a real R, I guess, yes, yes. And you don't know kids under 18 are going in without their parents' consent. That's a nice thing about that law. It works. <laughs> uh, is this the direction you want your career to go? Movies? What, here in Movies? Fort Worth? You mean? Oh, I see. No, uh, it doesn't matter to me. I like doing The Tonight Show. I like that. I like telling jokes for a life. Movies are okay. I mean, movies are fun to make after you've made them, like if you're in a restaurant and people say, we just saw your movie. Oh, really? I was having veal piccata, you know. Uh, that's fun, but they're not fun to make. The Tonight Show is fun to do, or working in front of an audience, like tonight is fun, because you get up and you tell the jokes, and you, and, you, and you get paid right away, essentially. It's really a difference between getting your check six months from now, or getting your check every day. I'm, I, I'm always amazed that friends of mine have jobs where they get paid once a month. And I think, oh, that's awful, just get paid once a month. Whereas, when you do stand-up, you get paid every day. You know, after the show, people go, oh, very good, and so on and so on. But when you do a film, you find yourself saying, Jim, did you like it? Bob, you know, you call the janitor over, did you see that scene? Yeah, what'd you think? I did not like it. No? I mean, you just, there's just nobody to ask. You know, you, you, you go with the director, and if, you, and if you like the director, which we did in this case, it's great. But if you have a director who maybe you don't really think they're that funny or whatever, it's just awful, because you just put everything you do in their hands without knowing at all whether it, whether it works or not. It's a, strange, uh, it's a strange experience. It's not fun to do, but it's fun once it comes out. Who directed Collision Course? Uh, a guy by the name of Louis Teague. He did Jewel of the Nile. Oh, yeah. And a few others, yeah. Good, yeah. good, good guy. Yeah, yeah, he was a lot of fun. We had a good time. Yeah. What is, <clears throat> excuse me, what is the deal now on Carson? You have a year's contract, or what do you have? I think I do. I mean, it's, um, I never really looked at it. You just uh, sign here. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, you know. I, I do it every Monday in a bunch of weeks. That's fine. See how it works out. Okay. All right. Um, one, one last question here. Yeah. All right. <laughs> we need a couple of dollars. <laughs> you, have a, you have a special coming up on NBC. I do have a special coming yeah. up. Uh, All right. Tell me enough. about that. Well, this is something I'm going to try here. It's a primetime thing. You know, I find the whenever I watch any primetime comedy specials on any of the networks, they try overly hard to be inside or hip. I see 20 minutes on the Contras and you know all these kind of jokes, and no one seems to get them or be interested in watching them, and they don't seem to have any audience. But whenever I do Letterman or a college or any kind of audience, the things that always seem to cross all generational lines is the stuff I do when I talk about my parents or family. Or, and uh, I don't consider it particularly hip or unhip. It just seems to be funny. I mean, uh, the Letterman audience laughs at it. The Merv Griffin audience laughs. I mean, those are as different as you could get. Yeah, everybody seems to like that kind of thing. So I thought, why not do a family comedy special where all the material I do is about my family and growing up and the sketches are about family life and it's not politics or sex or anything. It, I mean, it's not going to be one of these hokey things where I'm standing with a raincoat uh, crying in the, you know, with the sun and, you know, gosh, I mean, it's not, I mean, it'll just be hopefully real things, things that I, I talk about and uh, uh, we have some things with some people in the audience which will be fun to do. So um, it'll be about families, an American family specifically. Yeah because I don't think the overseas sales will be too big on this. So we'll see what happens. Guest stars? I'm not sure who we have yet. I mean, it's November, so 
I mean, who you want and who you get are two different things. So you don't want to say this person. And then, oh, well, I guess uh, the Beatles didn't reunion on your show. No, no. So we got, uh, you know, the 1910 Fruit Gum Company. You know, you can't. You have to be careful. <laughs> you can't. Uh, Jay, I could go on talking with yes, you. Yes, we could, but evening, unfortunately. But unfortunately. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate anyway, it. Anyway, continue. Good luck to you. Why, thank you very much. And keep us laughing. Why, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's great. And well, I'm doing some concerts, but I'm mm -hmm. sure once uh, all this wears off and you're back in the street again, you're down doing clubs again. <laughs> so it's fine. I mean, I used to strip joints and all those guys. So that's where I came up in. It's fine. I loved it. It was great. I still like it, but I mean, it's silly to do two weeks in a club and you do one night at the convention center. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, but this won't last. People get too tired and then you go back to the clubs again. So I mean, just a, some sort of vicious circle. You know? I'm just <laughs> amazed at the number of, like, you know, female comics I've seen on TV that they're just not funny. I mean, yeah. They're just not funny. Well, that's a good criteria. That's why you should, uh, you know, that's why you need to do it. Um, they're looking for female comedians, you know? I mean, it's one of these, uh, like, uh, that's what they need. I mean, you can rock and pass all these white guys with the blue blazer and the red ties real quick, you know? But you got to do it the real way. Try to avoid star search and these idiot shows. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And get on a real show where you're a comedian, not two minutes of... Is cable a viable outlet? Cable's okay. But when you do it on cable, they now own you and own that piece of tape for the rest of your life. So you have to be careful. Don't give them too much. But, mm -hmm. but you really need to go in a place where there are professional audiences. Yeah, because this is on, like, there's a lot of college kids. And, uh, you know, some it's of the okay, stuff. okay, but college kids like sex jokes. And, yeah, and you know, then, and you know, I'm a little bit older than most of them. And, you know, I'm afraid some of the stuff I might find is funny is just, you know, Going over their heads. That's fine. You know. Better go over their heads in between their legs, you know? <laughs> I mean, really, because then you wind up with just this over their head and funny. At least if it's not funny, at mm -hmm. least it's intelligent. You know, at least you have something. Like when I do the Tonight Show and I do the newspaper headlines and stuff like that, if they're not funny, at least people go, well, wow, it's intelligent and it's well. You know. I don't know if that's something okay. that, that's just that particular. We're ready. I mean, you're ready for your promos. This is in the shot. Oh. Okay. Now I'm supposed to nod appreciably. No, no, you, oh. you, you, you can talk. Oh, I see. I'm flailing. <laughs> I'm supposed to nod oh. intelligently or <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Are you rolling? Yes. Okay. Whatever you want to do. <laughs> Who do you like to talk with on The Tonight Show? Because Letterman loves to have you on, that's obvious. Who do I like for guests? Uh -huh. Oh, I don't know, anybody really. I, I haven't been doing it that long to say, uh, you know, Noel Coward or something. <laughs> yeah, you know, just, uh, anybody who's amusing. I, I find straight, dramatic, people who are not necessarily funny are often good because they're a good foil. When you bring on people who, because they always have these dull plotting stories that go on and really have no point. Well, you just have an actor on with someone who is not used to being uh, fun. Mm -hmm. You know, I had, uh, I don't know why I go, was that woman? No, she's in the Marlon Brando movie. Yet. Oh, she hasn't been around for a while. What the hell is her name? Ah, I not remember. Eva Marie Saint. Yeah, Eva Marie. Was it? And uh, they said, well, she's kind of dull. But she's actually very funny. I mean, once I started teasing her and the tape here since we took this out. Okay. Can you just sound check, Bobby? And this is Bobby's microphone, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O. <laughs> what kinds of experiences do you have with airlines hopping all over the country the way you do? Do you like doing The Tonight Show? What kind of deal do you have with The Tonight Show? One-year contract or what? What will you be doing on this NBC special? What is this movie you're doing, Collision Course? Do you enjoy being in movies? What is this, kind of a Beverly Hills cop thing?
Okay, let's 